first year of marriage, my wife and I were driving four lane highway and there was an older couple that was in front of us. And, and somehow it, that older couple attracted our attention. We ended up driving around them and you could see that there was a certain rigidity and nothing was happening in the car. There was this sense that silence was the order of the day, the order of the month for them. And my wife made a simple comment. She said, I want a relationship where we never drive in a car like that. That when we're driving, I want it to be animated and, and filled with lots of words. And it was a small comment, but in a moment, I said, yes, that's the kind of relationship that we were, we were created for. Closeness to other people, but fundamentally, closeness with God is the way we were created. It's natural to us, it's just right to us. Yet at the same time, I don't think I've ever spoken to a person who at some point didn't feel as though the Lord was quite distant. Scripture is so committed to us knowing this theme of God who draws near to us and calls us to be near to him, that it offers all kinds of images for it. And one is his people walking with him. That's what you see in the garden. The Lord walks with his people. A walk is a time when we are, are fully engaged with one another. We can know and be known. We can hear about the things that are most important. This is what intimacy and fellowship with our God is. It's simply a pleasure. It's an enjoyment. One of the passages that I find myself often going back to is Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus talks about, don't be anxious. And the reason I like it is because when he says that, he essentially says, let's go for a walk. And he points out the, the birds of the air, the, the flowers in the field, the grass that's here one day and gone the next. And he says, don't you realize that you are much more important to me than such things? And here might be one word. If we are looking for the presence of God, we are typically saying we want to viscerally experience it. We want to hear it with our ears. We want to see him with our eyes. What scripture says is that we live in an era where the Lord Jesus comes to us by way of his spirit. Here's the work of those who are in Christ. Believe, believe what he says. That has become our most predominant sense, that we listen to the very words that God has spoken and we say, yes, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. That is the fundamental transformation that we're looking for in our own hearts so we can hear the God who comes close. I'm a regular old grandfather, which means that becoming closer with my grandchildren is one of my great delights. But I want to be able to say, I love you. I, I love you all, plural, but I love you. And I want to express it in a hug, in reading a book, in playing together with you. That's, it's normal grandfather stuff, but it is, purely theological. It is simply this expression of this God who has said these things to me, and I want to, I want to pass it on in some way.
When we have had our eyes open to Jesus Christ and have put our trust in him rather than ourselves, we belong to him. And he says, hear the words, I am yours and you are mine. You are my treasured possession. You belong to me. Our God never fatigues in speaking these words to draw near those who feel like outcasts. Here's the unmistakable reality about our God. He pursues us, comes close to us, and invites us to come close right back. And I look forward to an eternity where he says, and there is more yet. Come, come closer still. That's, that's the delight of eternity.